appreciate your feedback, so you can open that in the convention app. Uh, just a reminder to silence your cell phones. We don't have any interruptions, please. And this session is being audio recorded. The recordings will be available on the APCA website approximately three to four weeks after the convention. And a reminder, the ABCA Champions Party takes place from 4.30 to 6 p.m. today in the Century Link Convention Center Grand Ballroom A, which is right outside here. Um, you can stop by the ABCA registration to purchase a ticket. I now have the pleasure in introducing today's speaker, Kyle Mishima from Rotate 123. Complete biographical information can be found in the convention program. Please join me in welcoming Kyle. Okay, uh, how many of you came to the session yesterday? Okay, um, we're going to have a variety of topics today, uh, lots of product stuff, of course. Um, but before we do that, I just want to take a survey of what do you use? Do you use Rotate 123? Raise your hand. Uh, Solar Stats. Whoever forms, I guess that would be plus jam video. Okay. And then do you flow coach club? High school? Middle school? College? Okay. Alright, um, so I should probably stick with uh, in-depth on products since a lot of you are users for now. Uh, so we have a series of things. First one is, uh, we're going to start with video uh, because it's probably the least use of our product uh, portfolio. We have four products and um, I think it's a really efficient, useful way to get at issues, but it also helps to know kind of the techniques for getting there, starting with the stats. Okay. And so I'll show you how easy it is to set this thing up. Uh, we'll have some tips about our products because uh, there's always a few questions about how you, how you do this or that. Um, and then uh, we've got some new features, new products, and I'll actually have you guys provide feedback about things you'd like to see. Um, because we have a little more staff this year, so we'll be able to actually be on some kind of a uh, schedule to produce a lot of good stuff this year. Alright, and then uh, the final one is that uh, we'll talk a little about, about this with now customized coaching system. Um, which will really help you to utilize all the tools by driving your coaching methodology through looking at the numbers and then going from there to systematically approaching the practices. It's uh, just a great introduction to that whole process and uh, just a sign up for that and I'll have that up there in a sec. Okay, so let's do video. Um, the first step is how do you set the stuff up and it's really, really straightforward and simple. Okay? So, yeah, set the camera up at the uh, end line, turn it on, don't touch it. Okay, so don't touch it till the end of the, the set and move it to the other side. Um, stat is set using solo stats. Upload the videos. Once you're done, upload the videos to YouTube, copy the URL, paste it into a uh, solo stat video, and then stick the first stat. Make sure you have to go right now. Okay. Jump out. Okay, so here's a, here's a video that's been uploaded. This is, uh, I think it's a Spokane, it's a qualifier. So we'll copy that URL, it's a day one, moxie, game one. And then we'll go over to video and to the setup tab. And we just have to have game one there. Click the uh, plus button. So, uh, and I'll just put the video in there and then get it to the point where I want to see the first action and the first stat and line them up. And once that happens, everything else will just goes automatically. Right? So, let's see if we can Okay. So, I'll tap, paste it in here, say OK. Thank you very much. And I'll double click that and get that video started. Now, this particular video has a little. Okay, so all the introductory stuff and then, you know. And shake some things. So I know that this video starts someplace around 140. Up there. Okay. So now we're going to start the video and look for the first touch, which is Miranda with the three pass. That looks like the pass. We'll stop it right there, and then we'll hit the sync button, 
And now you notice this offset went from 0 to 152, which is the location of the first touch, okay? All that's doing is it's matching the video's time frame with the solo stats time frame because your solo stats uh, is on your iPad, which has a clock. Every single point is being time stamped. Every time you press that button and say enter, it's time stamping the stat. So all the stats after that are already synchronized. Okay, that's the only sync you need to do. Right? It's none of this manual stuff and you know, cut things by hand and all that joke. It's just, that's a, to me, you know, I'm a part-time coach and I don't want to inflict pain on you. And as a software guy for 35 years in Silicon Valley, I've worked on consumer software my entire life. And the whole thing about consumer software is making it simple and easy and inexpensive. Right? So my target is lots of part-time coaches, not a big budget and try to make it simple and efficient for you. So it's all synced up and we can test to see if it's working right. So let's go to this line here and double click. See if it's gonna make a hit. So she's standing, where is she? There she is, right. and it's killed. Okay, so it's all synced already. Now the cool thing is, once you get a bunch of video, you can go to the filter page and filter against that. So you can go look at a specific person. Let's look at Bianca, who's one of the outside hitters. We'll look at all rotations. We'll turn off all the in rally stuff and all these other things and look at just one thing. Let's see your spike kills, okay? You hit the results tab and you get a 377 records in the database. It's already sorted and now we just double click this guy and then we'll see what happens. So she takes a pipe, they dig but it goes in the net, it's a kill, okay? So the cool thing is that all of these are for her, they're kills, and I can click on this link and now you have the URLs for every single one of those Copy, paste, send it to the player, send it to the other coaches, review, right? So it's that simple. And for me, because these, this was the 17s teams, it made it trivial to get highlight reels. I mean, it's like, you know, like two minutes, right? To get all the highlight reels from the season. In fact, I had that request happen because that was two seasons ago and one of the players needed videos for this past season and the club director asked me for it, it took me that long. I just asked, what do you want to see? Right, blocks, <coughs> legs, and whatever any combination I can provide you, okay? So that series of steps makes it really, really easy. The reason we use YouTube is for two reasons. Number one, it's free, which means it's free for you and me. And number two, Google has the highest bandwidth on Earth, right? They have more uh, fiber optic cable than anybody else out there. So their ability to deliver video to you is the best of anybody, okay? So you can provide that you know, anywhere you want, you know, mobile device, whatever. You're gonna provide that at a, at a great pace. Yes. User errors. Let's say you know it's new yes. or here's the person doing it, so the yep. time stamp isn't quite correct. Yeah. You can manually correct the entry points. So what I recommend is when you go to this page, let me hide this. When you go to this page, and if you find something that's out of sync, you go to that item and then you sync from that spot. Okay. Usually, um, if your coach is doing every single touch in rally. Uh, the drift is really minimal, and the worst that happens is maybe some correction, which will be like an entry point that says I have to correct this thing, and the rest of the timestamps will work. So, for example, because it's real time or real time, timeouts don't matter, right? Because the next stat happens after the timeout. So, you know, the timeout happens, you know, three minutes into the game, right? And then you restart at four minutes into the game. The next entry is at four minutes. It all lines up, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It's taken care of. Okay, so none of this. You know, line by line, stat by stat, synchronizing stuff. It's crazy. I and mean, I don't know who does that stuff because, frankly, I don't have the time for that. You know, I want to get to looking at the videos, getting the insights, and correcting my team. Right? And that's what I think you should be doing, too. Yeah. Sorry if this is an obvious question to answer. But, so, with all the timestamp, all the dead time between plays, that's already that just filtered out naturally because of the time stats? Yeah. It's real time to real time. Right? So, for example, like I said, the timeout situation, right? The timeout happens, you know, four minutes in, right? So the next stat doesn't happen until the timeout's over, right? So they're both, the camera's still running. And that's the other thing, right? People have a habit of turning the camera on and off. It's like, don't touch the camera because you'll make a ton of work for yourself if you do that, okay? Because we'll do the clipping for you. You don't have to worry about all that fluff space. And you know what? Google doesn't care. Here's what Google does, right? Back in the day when they had time limits, the more videos you put up for free, the more time they gave me. So I got premium stats literally in the first like you know two months. I've got about three thousand videos up there right now. Okay? And it's all free. And some of the stuff is really old. Things that like it's hard to look at. <laughs> like archival footage. <laughs> Any other questions?
So please stop me like this because I, I'd like to keep it as interactive as possible so you don't have to you know, go ask later. Yes? So the highlight reel that, that it spit out, that's a series of links to YouTube videos that are going to be like clips of maybe 10 seconds? Yes. Is there a way to make that into one continuous video? Yeah. So that's kind of the next phase of work for us is to turn that into a playlist. Right. Right. Because playlists are uh, available within YouTube already. And so there's a little API that we have to write to, but we haven't had a chance to do that yet. So as of now, it's, it's click on the link, watch the 10 seconds, click right. on the next link. Exactly. Right. So it's a little bit of work, but uh, we'll fix that probably by the end of like maybe summer. Awesome. For next season. Yeah. Other questions? That's a great question. Other questions? So oh, let's see, where was I? So we got that part, we did the filtering, so let me drop back to the, the uh, slide set and try to remember what was going next. Okay, so we got all these pieces. All right, now let's go into the uh, analysis portion of this and using the series of tools and video to fix your team, okay? So one of the key stats that's really important, and anybody who goes to GMS clinics will, will hear this, because it's Gil Felling, uh, Fellingham from BYU who did stats helping out uh, Carl McGowan. 2% increase in side out equals a 28% increase in match wins. Okay? Super high sensitivity to that one stat. So here's the thing, right? Receive stats really matter a lot. Typically in a game, you take 20 balls. If you don't shank one ball, that's a 5% improvement, right, in your passing. And if you're at a 50% side out rate, that's a 2.5% improvement in your side out rate. So one passing error per game can change your season. Okay? So think carefully about that because I don't think people look at the error rates in passing very carefully. You get fixated on the rating number, not the error rate. Because if you got a choice between a, you know, a 15%er and a 10%er, and the 15%er might be at 225 and the 10%er might be at 2.0, which do you go with? A little bit depends. A little bit depends on how fast an offense you're running, because accuracy might be more important than error. But I got to tell you, that 5% is super expensive, right? OK, so we're going to go through a quick analysis process, starting with web reports, and then we're going to end up at video. OK, and see how all the products chain together to help you to do analysis. <laughs> So we're going to start with, um, let's see, let's see that's what page you know. Okay, so this is web report. When you take your stats in solo stats and you press backup, when you have an internet connection, all your data gets backed up to our server, right? Our server set at Google. People ask me questions about if my subscription expires and the data go away. The answer is no, we've never deleted a single record of data. There's two reasons for it. Number one, you need it and you may come back, and we don't ever believe anything. The second thing is, it doesn't take up very much space, okay? A season's worth of stats is probably smaller than an average photo on your iPhone. An average photo on your iPhone is probably about five megabytes. Season stats is probably less than that, right? Because it's all text. Okay, so we don't delete anything. And our data is stored at Google, so it's very robust. Okay, we don't worry about backups or anything. The uptime is like almost 100 percent, so we don't have any problems. Okay, and that means your data is secure. Right? So I'll go to matches page, and the matches page allows you to you know, take combinations of matches to compare. What I like to do is I like to look at chunks of tournaments because a single match is usually too much variability. But if I can compare tournament A to tournament B, it's a lot easier. So here I'm looking at uh, my early season qualifier for, for the local league and then the Las Vegas showcase, okay, just to kind of get a, a chunk of sampling, kind of early season to see what's going on. I'm going to go to the Analyze tab, and the Analyze tab has rotation-based uh, cuts. So the top one is uh, serving, and then the lower half is received. So let's look at the lower half. Now, if you scan through this thing, you'll see, you know, we got a 16 times there and 19 times there. But this one wasn't so bad because we still had a 57% side out rate. But look at over here. At rotation 4, we're at 50%. Okay, so a lot lower than the other rotations. So if we click on this, it expands out and it tells you who did what. Right? And this is just from pressing buttons on solo stats. We do all this analysis for you and give you reports that are like this in depth. You don't have to do any work because my philosophy is if you have to create your own report, you just wasted an hour. Right? We want to provide the insights, and if you have a report you really need, ask me. 
And if it makes sense for a lot of coaches, we'll put it up. We just happened you know, multiple times already. So in this particular instance, if we look at the pass error rate column, you'll notice that two people, Miranda down at the bottom at five, and Bianca in the second row is at nine. They're both the outside hitters, right? So they and, and the Libras are taking on balls, right? Bianca's having problems in rotation four because she's actually overall not bad. Okay, but in rotation four, there's a problem. The question is, what's going on, right? So this is where syncing the number to a visual really helps because I have no idea what this means. I guess, okay, we're running a 6-2, rotation four is like rotation one. The outside's on the right, the center's right next to her on the right, right? So the center's probably cut in front of her, and maybe there's a little traffic issue going on there. Maybe. So if we go over to a video, and I can go and do that filter, so I'm going to take uh, just rotation four, and I will take, uh, Bianca's already been selected, and we'll take receive error, right? And we'll filter that. There's 18 instances of that. And there's a one in here that's got a really good view. So I'm going to SPVC is the first one of them. It's got a nice vertical view. Now, we're on the other side, and there she is. Okay, so the center was kind of right in there, right? And in fact, when I go through and look at a lot of the videos, it kind of looks like that, where there's a combination of that person cutting through, and the other part of it is that Bianca's not so great on the right. Okay. So, a couple of choices. We can really work on that rotation and really figure out that traffic part, or we can just change the rotation. So, the way we do that is we go over to Rotate one, two, three, and page here. Okay. So this is the formations page. This is rotation four. So there's Bianca and there's the center, right? And so all this stuff sets up automatically once you drop everybody in, right? So in, in uh, rotate one, two, three, you have this setup. So the setters are here, and you just drop the players in, and you drop in all your subs. Right? We have a six-two with oppos coming in. We've got two big oppos coming in for two small setters. Right? And all the substitutions are, are handled for you automatically once you drop all these things in. Right? So we go back to formations, we can go to a secondary, like an alternate layout, so, and then say, okay, you know what, Tatum out here is not bad as a passer. And in fact, if we pull her back, maybe we can get a little, you know, relief. So we'll push the, the hitter up with the center so they're completely out of traffic. And by the way, Rotate123 has the effective thing of a spelling checker, which is a rotation overlap checker. So if you do something bad like that, Okay, it'll tell you that's a no-no formation, so you've got to move the player back over. Okay. And same thing with the, uh, the oppo, you can't move them too far back, right? Because that's the left front and the middle left back is here. Okay. So it checks that for you, and so that's the adjustment. And then we practice this a bit to make sure that everybody knows how to do this, and you know, you know communication issues are correct. And so this is the alternate plan. So if the arm gets in trouble next time, we just flip into this, or maybe we just use this, right? depending on how you know, things are going in the match. That make sense? So we've gone through all four products now, right? Starting with stats, right? Then to web reports, doing the analysis, then to solo stats video, right? And then all the way back to rotate one, two, three, which is your planning tool. Okay, and this whole spectrum of stuff that's available. So those four tools come really handy for planning out what you're going to do and then prepare your next practice. <coughs> okay, so let's see. Let's jump back. Alright, so we, I have all these kind of all there too. And then uh, at the end, well, there's a link to you can, you know, get a copy of all this stuff. So there's uh, soul stats and that part. Okay, so here are a few tips. Uh, let me switch over to my iPad so that I can actually show you. Okay, so this is the uh, soul stats interface. Um, and the way you enter data here is it's player action or action player, doesn't really matter whichever way you put it in. So in this case, let's just say Alley, player one, I clicked on that, you know, makes a kill. So the green buttons are your points earned, those are the plus things. The uh, yellow, orangey buttons are errors, and the red stuff are false, right? False whistle blows, game stops, okay? So if I score, I can say uh, spike and enter. Or I prefer the short answer, which is alley, and then double tap that button to enter the alley. That's it. Okay? So those are all the end of rally actions. Now, if there's in rally stuff, all the gray buttons in the middle don't stop the action, right? So I can say, uh, tap the dig button next to Natalie and just double tap that. So it makes it really fast to enter that dig for 
for Natalie, Maggie has a hit and play, and then Bailey has a block still in play, okay? And then we terminate by, you know, maybe kill or something. Okay. Now, what happens is that, you know, the side outs are handled uh, automatically, so if I make a service error and Allie's serving, the little red dot goes to the other side, the rotation moves forward, and so we track the rotations, keep track of who's, you know, who's serving, and so forth. Now, one of the things that always comes up as a question is how do we handle assists? Two parts. Number one, within the, uh, within the setup, you determine up here, you know, who's the setup, okay? And so, it assumes that any time the kill happens, the, the, set, the assist goes to that player automatically. You don't have to do anything. But, if somebody else happens to set, so let's say Allie, you know, makes a kill, the assist button at the bottom lights up, and you press that, okay, and then who'd the ball come from? In this case, maybe it came from heaven. There's another scenario, which is, what if the kill came off of an overpass, right? So, Allie, you know, makes a kill, we hit assist, and there's a pink their player button up there, so we just press that, okay, and assign that assist away from us. That way the count's correct. Make sense? The same process applies for blocking. Two people are involved, you can pick either blocker and say, Natalie made a block, press assist, and Maggie helped her. So that's the way the assist button works. And that's a little bit kind of arcane in there, so people you know, uh, email me a lot with that particular question. Any questions about this process? Okay, so it's very, very simple. The stats, if you slide up the screen, right, these are ongoing stats for the, for, for the match that you're in. Okay? And then the other thing that I love, particularly at tournaments where, where the uh, referee or the, uh, the players who are scoring go to sleep is the point log. Because this is where, you know, you say, hey, you missed the point. It's better to go up there and say, look, the last thing that happened was, you know, our person received the ball, and then they hit the ball in the net, right? The point log will tell you exactly what happened, right? It's a little better argument. Okay, you missed the point over there. Right, we do this all the time. So, you know, my staff person is going like this and, you know, double checking so that that one point could be a big deal later on. So, you know, it's good to check, particularly in these tough matches. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 Okay. So let's say you, you know, back to the video. Uh huh. Um, let's say you missed a stat. Yep. So how? Yeah. Right now, um, we don't have a way to edit back in, but that's the other thing we're working on in this uh, winter season is an editor. So within whatever reports you'll be able to go and make corrections, because clearly in video you see it, right? You know, oh, that wasn't Megan. You know, back past the ball. Right? Because sometimes you know, you just in a hurry, you hit the wrong button. So you'll be able to make that. Here and I had times when I changed my rotation, mm -hmm. I put it in as this person setting. We were running a 6 2. Well, then I changed and had another person set that wasn't in that. So, how do you get that stats when it automatically sets the assist to who you assigned at the beginning of the match? The you, can, you can actually, during the match, you can actually go in here and I can go in here and reset that to another person. During that. So, yeah, when that change occurs, go in and. Yeah, change it, it and then from the, that point forward, that's the person that will be assigned the assist. Yeah. And if I missed the did. Stats, right. In terms of singing, uh -huh. how does that? If I can't correct that and enter that singing, yeah. So we'll we'll need to see the extent of the first phase of editing you'll be capable of doing, because new entries may or may not be that easy. The problem with all those uh, after the fact entries is you can actually corrupt the data by like changing things where you side out when you shouldn't be siding out and stuff like that. So there'll be some constraints about what you can and can't do. I'm not completely certain yet because we haven't worked through all of it. Most of the stuff right now is about changing the assignments, who did the action, and changing the action value. But the action value has to be the same. In other words, you can't turn a kill into an error, as an example, right? Because otherwise, the side out can completely get, get whacked. Any other questions? Okay, so let me uh, drop back here. Replays. How do you handle those replays on the stats? Replay on the stats. You mean like, uh, oh, easy, yeah. Good. That's a great question. Excellent. There's an undo button. Um, and and that's, a, that's another good point. Well, right now, you gotta, you got to do some massive undo if it's a long rally. Uh, but we'll, hopefully, we'll get to the point where we'll be able to just jump back to the last point. But we have that, we have that stack in here. So, for example, like, you see the numbers is 22 to 8, right? So, look it back out, right? That's 20. 
So the entire stack of actions is undoable all the way to the beginning because we track every single entry. Yeah, so we'll try to make it a little bit easier by having it you know, back to the last point time. If you had like you know, seven touches, you want to just jump back to the last touch. Any other questions? So uh, I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so say you have to go back like three or four points, or say as you did, you, you went back a lot. Yeah. How do you, would the syncing with the video still be the same if your video is still running? Like how? Uh, if you're re-entering stuff at that, that point, you'll have to manually sync those points. Okay. But and you'll see it. When you do your test, you'll see something that can be really off. You have to go back and find that area. Okay. But usually what you actually do is instead of trying to re-enter everything, you'll just make a correction. You can go up here and touch that and make a score correction. And the insertion will say score correction. Okay. And you just keep going. Okay. It's usually better to do that because you'll fall behind. And when that happens, it's like, you know, it's very chaotic. So it's better to miss a single point and move forward and you know just kind of lose that stat. The, the thing about statistics, right, is there's going to be errors. You'll have about 10% errors in your stats, but it won't matter. Once you collect it, you know, like like hundreds of data points, like maybe five, six matches worth, that stuff washes out. I mean, there's a statistical thing called uh, the law of large numbers, and that's part of what happens. It just kind of washes out because the good and the bad kind of compensate for each other. And at the end, it's like it's about right. And plus or minus 5, 10 percent isn't going to make a difference relative to who plays in the game. It's just not that close usually. Except unless you're going to lose national team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're on slip or something. No, tens of points or something. Any other questions? Okay. So let me turn this thing off. Back. Okay, so we got those. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let me do a little bit of a dive into web reports and the kinds of things that are possible here because um, some of it's a little subtle and people tend to use kind of what they see just in front of them and not sort of dig it beyond that. A um, couple things about it. One, when you open uh, your, your account, this is the, the Rotate123 site that you're logged in. And all the various products are across the top here, right? So this is web reports here, video, so forth. And you know different devices are hooked in, so you click on this to open up your, your particular uh, game um, or team. A couple things are important. One, you can open up as many windows into your particular team as you want, because it makes it really easy to compare. So for example, this is one instance, and I want to compare, let's say, these two tournaments, right, that are early season, and I'll do a summary here. And I want to look at that compared to uh, this set of matches. Right, which are later on. So it's you know it's like the next set of two tournaments. And now I can look at you know each of these things. If you have a big screen, you can put them right next to each other and say compare. Okay. So it makes it very, very easy to kind of go through stuff. The other thing is that we, we do a lot of pre-analysis for you. So for example, we chunk in uh, the player rankings by various chunks. This is plus minus points, right? Then the next one is serving, next one is receive, attack, and so forth. Um, if you have the pro version of rotate, uh, excuse me web reports, you can actually customize the columns. So you can go in here and add and subtract whatever columns you want to see. And then every one of these you can press an export button if you want to move to Excel or whatever else you need to do with it outside. Okay? So very customizable. All of these columns are sortable, so if I click on this column, I can go you know, either way, okay? to be able to select the thing that I want to rank the players by. Player ranking by skill is super important relative to optimizing your, optimize your rotations, because that's the way you want to pick the right set of, you know, Outsides, you know, passers, DS, blockers, and so forth. Okay. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about uh, some new features. A uh, couple of things that have been asked for a lot. One is uh, serve rating. We, we, we weren't doing surveys for a couple of reasons. I was trying to keep things really simple. And what I found is that the service rating number doesn't correlate really well to results. And so we use a number called point scoring, which tells you, you know, how much does that server hold the ball? 75% point scoring number means that they serve four times, right? They score three times, lose the ball four times on average. Okay? So that person's better than a 50% point scoring person, just like anything else. However, there's still a lot of places where you want to see the way that the serve is going and the results that are happening. So, for example, you know, how many uh, 
falls that are passed and put them into a, uh, a one quality pass or a basically a three quality serve, right? And so we're adding that in. And so, you know, in the buttons that we have at the top that are for the pass ratings, they will flip flop depending on whether or not you're serving or receiving. Okay? And allow you to do that. The other thing that we had a request is because there's because my marketplace is sort of from, you know, uh, sort of medium college all the way down to elementary is lots of free balls at the younger ages. Okay, and the, the jump to the market, right? The highest population is kind of in that, you know, 16 and under section, right? And so with all those free balls happening, you know, it wasn't a big deal for me because I was doing seven teams going to college basically. And uh, you know, the request was we want to track those because there's a lot of them. So we have a free ball rating uh, that's coming in uh, very shortly. Uh, along with that, we'll be doing uh, the editing through web reports. Okay. Questions? All right, the other thing we're doing is we're adding another layer of buttons for the terminating stats we call adjectives, which is basically a description against what happened. And so an example is like this. You hit the ball, you make that spike in error, what happened? Right? Did it go out? Did it go in the block? Did it go to the net? Or did you net? You know, did you have a net violation? Okay? So as soon as you hit that yellow spike error button, a, another window will show up on top of it and say, pick one of these, you know, four choices, right? Into the net, out, into the block, or net phone. Why so, is that a red button? What's that? Why is that a red button? Oh, that's a good point. It's not a red button because uh, you know, my developer pal who just did this didn't make it. <laughs> but you're right, it should be red. Right. Yeah, how many of the design team here? <laughs> the other one is on the kill side. Uh, this gets asked a lot. Like, right? what, what happened on the kill? So you have a little thing that looks like a net. So the lower half is where you're coming from, right? Front row or back row, left, center, right. So those will just stay in whatever position it's in that you left it last. So you know, if you have a two outside that's from the left, it will just stay on the left button if you lit, and you can change it if you have to. And then the other side is where to go. Okay? So you get an idea of people's preferences, and you know, the usual thing is you know, like 90% you know, cross court, right, from the left. <laughs> now let's try to learn to hit the line. Yes? Are you able to stat all this live during the game? Yeah, th this is really easy because this is a terminating stat, right. so the whistle just blew, and you got at least 30 seconds before you have to do anything else. You need about 3-4 seconds to put a stat in, right? in particular when they're chasing the ball after the kill, <laughs> hopefully, because they bounced it off the court. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? questions? Yes? What about like an unforced error? You hit the ball over. Yeah. You expected it to be dug by the other team, and they right. just screw it up. Right. So, I mean, or your team makes the unforced error. Right. Two people went for the ball, they both stopped. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, two instances are a little bit different. Um, you know, we're really not scoring the other side, so you're gonna, you know, the person's gonna get the, the kill regardless. Um, and so, you know, I don't have a way to track that. But on the second case, where two people go for the ball, we do have a a button called um, Who's Ball. And uh, you know, you'll be able to just press that button. That tells you that it was uh, one of these you know, people looking at each other things. Now the problem with the Who's Ball button right now is we sort of need a Who's Ball Assist button to tell you who else was helping out and not be hit with the ball. You know, so we can split the blame. Right now you have to blame somebody. Yeah. You know, one of two players. So Usually what we do is kind of pick the person whose zone it was in and say that the person <laughs> But if there is a little, there is a designation for that side. And that's in there because of again the level of the play where lots of this, you know, two people communication problems occur. Other questions? Okay. Um, so it's a little bit of an audience survey. Um, you know, if you have any requests for things that you'd like to see, let me know. You can tell me right now, or you can email me. My email will be up there in a second. Any hot requests for right now? No? Let's see your draw pictures of what you want to see. Okay. Move forward. Okay, now here's the most requested app or feature as people think it is, and it's really a really separate app. Uh, practice that. Okay? 
And the problem with using solo stats in most of the products is that they're locked into tracking rotations and side offs and stuff like that, which it should, makes it really hard to stat practice. When you have random things like just digging or just hitting or whatever. Okay? So with this product, you'll be able to define your practice day like a match, and then within that, you'll be able to define drills and the stats you want to keep in the drill. Okay? And the players involved in that. So, it'll end up looking like a spreadsheet and just have a set of buttons. Now the cool thing about this is twofold. One, it takes away all that paperwork of trying to aggregate all this stuff later, which is really painful. The part that I like even better is they're all time stamped. So you can actually do video breakdown of practices. I shoot video at every one of my practices. I don't care whether it's 17s or 13s, I do that. The problem with it is it's hard to go watch yourself when you got to filter through, you know, you see three touches in 10 minutes or something, right? And people get bored and say, I'm not gonna watch the next one because it takes a long time for me to show up. Okay, so with a video breakdown like this, you'll be able to do the same thing saying, you know, this was from the last two weeks of practice and I wanna see all my days, right? And you can quickly go through that. And for the coaches, it's great because you can look it up and then take all the, the funky technique and say, look at these four examples. This is what I'm talking about. You know the thing where you tell the player, you know, you're dropping your arm then you know you say that about 50 times and then one video said, hey coach, I'm dropping my arm. Yeah, thank you. That was about two months worth of feedback. Right? Okay, so that's sort of a really important part of what we'd like to have this happen. And for me, being an active active coach, you know, you get into it's all about me kind of thing. You know, I need this feature because it's really not useful otherwise. Okay, so this is really helpful. Question? The interface will look something like this, where you have you know, players on the side and stats across, and then you'll see some you know, running numbers as you go. Now, the likelihood is that the, the, the running numbers will be kind of below the screen. You'll have to scroll up to see that, because that's not really that critical when you take the stats. But you'll be able to kind of see the aggregate for the day. And then you'll do the same thing as in solo stats, which is you'll press backup data, and it will go to web reports, practice stat version, and you'll be able to see all the stats there. Is that useful? Like that idea? Okay. Yeah, because uh, this comes up a lot, and frankly, you're going to do this almost way more than you'll do even static games. We don't play that many games compared to practice, right? So. Okay, um, so the last piece is what we find is because we have a lot of data on usage of our products, um, one of the key things that's happened in my conversation with coaches all the time is. And it happened to me personally, frankly. So you know, once I had a lot of stats, I had a lot of stats, it was very confusing. Okay. So what we're doing is um, create, we created a thing called the WinNow Customized Coaching System. And what it does is it takes you through the process of interpreting the stats to get you focused on things that matter. And so uh, I'll have a little a web sign-up link here in a second at the end. Um, but it looks kind of like this, right? These are the kind of situations that happen a lot, right? You lose 23, 25, 21, 25, 19, 25, right? That's a lot of matches that get lost by just that subtle amount, right? And you know from the 2% rule that these are better within reach of wins, okay? Because in rally scoring, that's like a double swing. Six points is really more like three points. And so those games are way closer than, than they look, right? Just like the mirror thing, right? Objects are closer than here. Wins are much closer than here, too, okay? And you know, sometimes you feel like you, know, you got this great group of athletes, but you kind of underperform. Like, what's going on? And a lot of the things, these things are about like leaking points. And we'll show you in this one now, you know, training how to track down those leakages, like the one I showed you, right, with the receive pattern thing, right? Like, where's it coming from? One weird rotation where Bianca's having problems when the center crosses in front of her. She passes well from the middle and the left. Okay, so it's a little subtlety. You have the stats, you can actually pinpoint that and go fix it, rather than. You know, the notion of like spreading all the work across the whole deal. So for example, instead of working on six rotations for one hour, you work on two rotations for one hour, which is 30 minutes a piece, which one are you going to make more, more progress on? Right? It's always about spending the right amount of time on the right areas and focusing because your deal is to get a competitive advantage and the single thing we all have is pretty much the same amount of time. So if you can cram three years of practice into one year, your team's going to do better on average than the other team, right? Because you're kind of relatively equal. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do with this, this focus on statistics and looking at things that matter. Okay. 
So, you know, as coaching skills, right, there's a whole list, right, you know, physical, intuitive, psychological, you know, organizational, right, lots of other things we've got to do. We tend to be pretty good at the top, right, physical, intuitive stuff. But then when you start going down the list, you know, it kind of changes by person. And the places where we tend to be pretty weak is analytical. And having the right way of looking at these things. And it's not about, to me, it's like when I do numbers, like I'm not a statistician, okay, because so I've taken one stats class in my life. Right? And stats that I'm talking about aren't like being a statistician, I can do a regression analysis. It's not like that. Okay? This is about being able to look at the numbers and see the numbers that matter relative to your play. Right? So it's kind of being facile with it just enough to know the relationship between these things. As an example, right, what I showed earlier is, you know, did you know that there's 20 serves on average in a set? How long does a set last, by the way? How many minutes? 22 minutes on average. So there's little things that happen. Once you start doing this stuff, all these things start to come up. So the 20 receives is a really important number to think about because when you talk about error rates, they're always in percentages. Well, what does it mean relative to a set? Right? And that's why I did that little calculation for you to show that it's really subtle and those little leakages cost you a lot in games. Right? So, you know, we focus on that analytical part, and you know, it's the money ball thing all through, right? Which is Michael Lewis, right, says, right, some coaches believe. Right, they could judge a player's performance simply by watching it. And in this, they were deeply mistaken. Millions of dollars being wasted by getting the wrong player. Okay? And that's the whole point of that book. Because the Oakland A's had a tiny little budget and they had to fight the Yankees who had you know, like 100 times more money. Right? And still did pretty good. And so your deal is, you know, are you going to do better than that by not taking stats? I guarantee you, if you just start statting, you receive just that number alone and plug those leaks and get the right player on the court, your season's going to turn around. Right? And I've been doing that with my developmental 13s team already this season, using one of those attack ball launches. It's great, 13s against that machine. The girls were just fantastic. I was amazed. They didn't complain at all. Like, 17s complained. You know? But the 13s were like, oh, what? I guess this is what we're supposed to do, coach. Didn't know any better. And they're doing great. Their error rates are down. The best four passers are down under 15% already. Our season practice hasn't even started yet, right? Our first official practice is January 3, okay? So well, I've already got stats on them now, and I got a good idea of who's in what range and where we're going to play. And they're passing at about 155, which is unbelievable. I, I was expecting about 1.2 and about 30% errors. 13 developmental team, right? So I already have a baseline, and I have a pretty good idea that we'll be in control of games because if you don't control your pass, right, you don't control your game. So you know, our, so you know, what we're going to do is use the stats right to drive the systems, the training, and the strategies. And that's what the seminar is going to be about. And so the, the the whole point about customization is that you know your team, even with the same players, changes year to year because some players get better, some players get injured, they get worse, right? And the competition is definitely changing. So if you're not adjusting your plans and your training per season to your team you're really not extracting the most out of your team. If you do the same thing every year after year, I guarantee you, you're missing the boat relative to those little bitty fixes that are going to make a change on that 2% uh, number. And I bet you the number's way bigger than 2%. I think you can change your side out stat by maybe 5, 6, 7%, right? just by correcting the bad rotations. Okay? And the thing about bad rotations is, those are like super big sinkholes because the psychological deficit of going on a six point run makes you even worse because now you're totally panicked and you have to get out of there and you have no, you're like waiting for them to miss the serve. You know, so it's a double whammy where you have those bad rotations that tend to be even worse than they really are on paper because you have a psychological deficit going into them. So you really want to practice those rotations, not have them, and have them pretty close together so that, you know, it kind of bounces all over the place and you don't have a big deficit in certain spots. So in the workshop, you know, we're going to talk about like four key insights that's going to help you increase by 30% because there's a whole bunch of little things we're going to show you how to do. And then, you know, the idea is, right, you turn those like losing season into winning and then winning into championship, right? Because there's that little bit of margin, right? It's going to push you up to that win rate. And, you know, that's what this whole training is about and we're driving, you know, through stats. So the, the system includes, you know, the Pro Bundle, which is those four products, and then the self-paced training. And then, you know, unlimited email support, two hours from me, my phone, and, you know, you can sign up online at that URL. Okay, so that's, that's up and open now. And the first session will be, I think, next Tuesday, and we'll have more later on. Um, but for us, it's like, you know, we build all, we spend 
like hundreds of hours building tools, and people you know don't really know how to utilize them. But it's sort of our bad because you know we haven't provided the training to go along with it, right? So how do we expect you to you know make wonderful furniture if we don't just by giving you a set of you know saws and things like that? If we can give you some you know training around around it, okay? So. We'll take responsibility for that. And the other part of it is because I'm just like you, I've gone through this process. My first ABCA was here, right, in 2008. And since then, I've learned a ton of stuff. And one of the key things I learned was numbers are hard. And I'm a numbers guy. Because okay. I have a, I have a my half engineering degree and an MBA from Stanford, and it was hard to me. Right? So it's a lot of work. The only reason I got through it is because I'm in the business, so I had to figure it out. You know, so that got me the total tools useful. Right, so I've tried to condense all that that work down, and I've and I've talked to some of the best folks out here, um, who really helped me out with it um, to improve the whole process of, of you know uh, analyzing and understanding stats. And that's the other thing I love about the ABC, a little pitch for them, is that the coaches are wonderful. I mean, the amount of uh, openness and sharing that goes on and helping, and everybody's it's, it's amazing. I mean, I've never seen an organization. That so it's been fantastic for me, and it's really helped uh, with us making better products. Okay, so that's it. My contact is Kyle at rotate123.com. Uh, uh, my suggestion is that if any of you want to beta test some of the new stuff, just email me and tell me you know, you know, which ones you're interested in. And then the workshop is at uh, lindownbb.com. Uh, the slides for this um, presentation are at slash showcase. And then the one yesterday was called uh, Agent Skill Based Training, that's at uh, slash ABCA. Um, it was a pretty interesting session yesterday, and uh, it was targeted for a more developmental side, but really the, the methodology applies all the way up. And I think you might enjoy looking at that slide set. I'll have the video uh, of that posted uh, after this conference, so maybe sometime next week you'll be able to actually listen to the whole thing. Uh, but that was surprisingly well attended. I was kind of shocked the room was about twice the size. There must have been, I don't know, about eight people. And so um, it was a fun session to go through. And um, you know, exchange for me is always really helpful because I learned a lot in that process. And that's what we're all doing here, right? We're trying to learn and get better. So I uh, appreciate that. So questions? Any questions? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah, the, the learning curve for putting the stats in is depend. Okay, I'm going to say something a little not nice. The, the, the learning curve for putting the stats in is, is inversely proportional to age. Okay, so I'm 61, which means I'm an invalid. Okay. I can't press buttons fast enough, no matter the fact that I know exactly where they are because I put them there. Okay, but my son, who's 18, could cover everything and have a conversation. So he did all the rally touches and had a conversation, and sometimes he would complain about the game being slow. Right? So that's the difference in the sort of the age versus butt pressing. You know? so, so probably the best spot is to be in your 30s, maybe, where you understand the game and you can still press the buttons. Understanding the game is important too. My managers can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the process is really simple, because it's just basically player action, player action. And what I suggest is if you have any video, and it doesn't have to be your video, but you know, it helps to have your videos because you know the players, but you, you can go to YouTube and pick up like a college game and put the numbers in and just practice. Just watch a game. And video practice is the best way to do it because that gives you real time economy where you don't have a choice, right? The, the game ends and the whistle blows and the next one starts, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's the fastest way to learn. But I'll tell you right now, I have trained uh, seven, eight players on the bench because the assistant coach was sick or something and I said, hey, do this and do that, and they're done. They're just Yeah. Yeah, all the all the other stuff is after the facts, so you got plenty of time. The only one that's like time sensitive is the entering the stats. The rest of it is, you know, at whatever pace you want to go. So that, that part's not hard. And frankly, you know, if you have questions, I mean I'm answering email all the time. 
and my email response cycle is really fast on average. If I'm near the, near, I'm typically right at my, my keyboard, and so most people I answer in seven, 30 minutes. Yep, that part is like ridiculously simple. You got an export button inside of oh, let me show you. You know, Max Prep is like ridiculously simple. And and people well, you know, we get blamed for their complexity, which is I would prefer to press the button and have it show up at Max Preps, but they don't allow that. So you have to export the file and then pick up the file at Max Prep. So basically you do you press this button here, right, and the file just appeared. So on the Max Prep side, it takes work because you have to set up the game, to set up the match, the names and the dates and the scores. I don't know why, because all that data is in here, and then you got to import it in. Okay, so they create a lot more work than I think is necessary. All that data is in our file, and it should be like press the button, you know, boom, it's all there. But it's not, it's not a big deal. I mean, this import process is probably it takes you longer to set up the the, the match in Max Prep than it does to import the file. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the 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 app itself has uh, seven days free, so you can play with it. And Web Reports has thirty days free because without a chunk of data, it's another mean punch. Uh, Rotate one two three seven days free of you know, play with the rotations, and the video is seven days as well. So all these things have free access. And if you need more, just email me. I'll give you more time. It's not a problem. Yep. Um, I know you have an Excel uh, file that you import from but any chance of doing a Google Docs import? I just find Google Docs easier to share amongst other staff and other coaches as a file instead. I know right now I can take another step to Excel and then copy and paste it over to a Google Doc, but any chance to add um, another button? No, you can actually go straight to Google Docs. Oh, okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a CSV file. So open a, a, Google, a Google Sheet and import it. It's the same, it works. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. I was just going to comment about the age of the person. I looked at it and I did this free trial and I, my assistant coach is my daughter who's 26 and my player is the 13 year old on the team and she was gone and I handed it to my 13 year old. My mom, you just do this. And she was doing it and she's subbing in and out. And I was like, <laughs> okay, it's yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. So exactly, yeah. I'm going, okay, wait, I missed that ball, that touch. It's like, it doesn't matter. You get the beginning and the ending right. and the in between part. If you don't get the every top ball they get in play, right. so now if you look at the kill percentage, exactly. kill error ratio anyway, is more important. Yeah, and there's a second way of doing this, which is that you know when I had my 45-year-old assistant coach going, he was doing end of rally because he couldn't do the middle part, and he was just like me, he wasn't so good with the end of rally part. But what we do is we tabulate on paper, one, one girl tick marks uh, swings, and the other girl tick marks digs. And then you press this button over here called edit, and you just hand enter these things. That's how we did a lot of our stats. Like this one shows them. So clearly, we did it that way in paper on this section before my son took over. And that point, it got really easy. <laughs> yeah. So we, we try to you know, have as many compensations as possible for actual situations. The, the reason the product is called Soul Stats is because when I started coaching, I was by myself. And there was no way for me to take stats with any products that I purchased. I purchased three of them. right? And I spent a lot of money and not use them because I couldn't do it in a game. Still coach. So solo stats allows you to just take the end of rally stat, which means that when you're taking the stat, the whistle's already blown. So you're not so you can keep your heads up watching your game and then at the end after the whistle blows you get another number. Right? So that prevents you from missing the game and still kind of get the engaged. When you get riled up, it's still kind of hard. You know, when things are close and your heart's pounding, you know, it's still kind of hard. But it's doable. It's very doable. Younger coaches won't have any problems just doing the end of rally stuff. As long as you don't yell at <laughs> Other questions? Oh, you know, I want to mention one other thing. I don't have the device with me. Kindle has a low-end Kindle Fire now. It's a seven-incher. It's 50 bucks, and it works great. I've tried it now because a couple, a couple of club coaches said, what do you think about this one? I said, oh, we'll, we'll buy it. Let's try it. So we tested it, and it works great. <coughs> yeah, because we do Android as well. And it's, it's, it's a perfect size because it actually fits in your hand. Like, this is actually too big. It's very clunky without a handle holder. You know, you're slipping all over the place and you're sitting down and all that stuff, and then you drop it and all the other good things that happen. Um, so, the other thing about the Kindle Fire, it's 50 bucks. You know how many iPads get crushed per season? 
You don't want to know. And the good news is because we do a backup to our web reports, right, people don't lose much data. Okay. So that's the good news. But you know, the smaller device, cheap, you know, for clubs it's great. We have club pricing available too, by the way, if you're running a club um, to keep it, you know, a little less expensive. So any other questions? Suggestions? Requests? How much is the price? I, I snuck in late, so... Oh, yeah, the price, I'll give you the, the, the kind of the chunks of it. Um, so, the pro version of Souls, there's a cheap version of Souls, that's for 499 and that doesn't do the in-rally stuff. Well, it does in-rally, but it doesn't have these uh, little buttons in here uh, that accelerate the process. So, it's 499 for the basic one, it's 1299 for the, the pro version per year. And then web reports is 30 bucks, rotate one, two, three is 30 bucks, and video sync is $69. But you can buy the whole thing as a package by month if you want. And that ranges from about 144 for the, I think 140 for the plus version and 154 for the pro version. And you can buy them by the month, so it can be as little as $15 or something for a four, four pack combo. So if you got a three month season for, for school, you can get all of them for about 60 bucks. So it just depends. And the data doesn't go away. That's the other important thing. So you can restart the next year and have last year's data. Other questions? No? So uh, if you get a chance, uh, you know, please go sign up and check out this, um, check out the uh, live <laughs> workshop that we're going to be doing this week. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. it this is a... Uh, you know, there's 200 pages in the actual final version when you purchase the whole package. Um, I'll give you an introduction for an hour to show you kind of the methodology we'll be using. And I think you'll find, even within that hour's time frame, that it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, it's taken a lot of effort to just kind of cull the stuff down to something relatively simple and straightforward. Because, you know, none of us have the time, right? You don't need a science experiment here. You need to fix your team. And a lot of it's as simple as possible. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, I have cards and other stuff up here. Thank you.